Oh, is it, guys? Surprisingly not feeling very hungover after last night. Things got quite hectic. Yeah, now, now it's a party for sure. Sam and I are having a bit of a chill day. I am going to start making the perfect eggy bakey roll. I'm going to teach you guys the secret. Okay, I've got the bacon on the go, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some butter in the pan with the, uh, once the bacon's out, and then fry the eggs. And then while you're doing that, what you've got to do is you've got to get the grill on, and you cut the rolls, and you put the rolls under the grill. That's how you get them perfectly toasted. Anyway, I was asking Sav which of the butters I could use in the fridge, and she said, uh, not my president. I'll let you all recover from that one for a bit. All right, let's get into the rolls. Okay, onto the rolls. These rolls. These are from Spa, Spa and Fred Hook. Now one thing that I am gonna warn you about is too much bacon. Yes, I know that line doesn't really exist in English, but on a roll this size, you only need two pieces of bacon. And if you do any more, then it just, it doesn't work because it's all about ratios and proportions. You're gonna do one dollar, one of these eggs, and that's the perfect size for this roll. When you fry that, it's gonna be So you just want two pieces of bacon, you're gonna get the perfect ratio, guys, trust me. Okay, grilling techniques. Set the rack at about halfway, half height. And then you just slide the rolls in there and... All right, now, cutting the roll. Super simple. If you mess it up, you can ruin your whole eggy bakey roll. And if you want the perfect eggy bakey roll, instead of cutting it halfway through the base, which is how most people cut it, you cut it actually halfway through the roll. So if you look at that one, you got equidistant or equi thickness sides at the thickest point. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, bacon has been set off to the side. Get some of this Not My President into the pan. Don't want too much. You want a nice little bit so that your eggs aren't sticking. Okay, the grill's heating up there, you can see. When using a small pan, don't overcrowd your eggs, okay? That's just my personal preference. You can chuck as many eggs in as you want. Roll is in. Now you might say, oh, they use so much electricity, whatever, why don't you just put it in the toaster? Do it this way, and then put it in the toaster, and you tell me which one's better. Look at that, that's perfect. That's a perfectly toasted roll there. Oh, and the skeezer. Oh, here we go. A little bit of salt and pepper on the egg. Got the second roll in. Also, you really want to monitor these, because burning a roll, what's the cardinal sin? The cardinal sin is burning a roll. Okay, egg looks ready to go. Okay, I've got the second egg on the go. Now. I want to talk to you guys about bacon laying techniques, okay? In the eggy bakey roll community, there's two very popular techniques. You get, leave the bacon as it is, pop it in. Oh, I should have said you should be using streaky. Streaky is by far the best bacon. I personally like this one, just because then when I'm eating it, I know exactly where the bacon is in the roll and I can manage it, whatever. This one, as you see here, sometimes you can do it like this. You don't have to do it like that. You can do the crisscross, okay? Where you can actually like double up your bacon like this. But the only problem with this is that if you don't have sharp gnashes, teeth, then when you bite, you might accidentally pull out extra pieces of bacon and then you lose your consistency in your roll. So in summary, it's up to you which technique you want to use. Just remember the pros and cons of each. Then personally, what I like to do as well, is just crack the yolk under here and spread it almost like, like free gravy, free egg gravy. I'll let Sam do her one there. Mm -mm. Okay, I will do Sam's one. Customer review, that's what I like to hear. Mm. The thing about eggy bakey rolls, they remind me of school days and Saturday morning rugby matches. Parents and whatever would make eggy bakey rolls. It's just, you know, it's like a nostalgic breakfast. Mm. So if you're an expert eggy bakey roll eater like me, and you pop the yolk before, and you get absolutely no spillage, and then what you can do is dust that off, and back in the cupboard it goes. Sam is taking me to the shops. Upon her request. Oh, police squad, rolling up. All right. One, two, three, four. The four biker men of the up, up, managed, uh, Signal Hill from a different angle. Table Mountains over there. We're in the waterfront. We are coming into Zara, but I did a whole thing on it yesterday, so if you want to see me tuning Zara, Go to yesterday's vlog. You're not getting any of it in this vlog. When you hang your denim skirt up on the washing line and you have three very bored Jack Russells at home. I think this top has a matching backpack that goes with it. It's got all the tassels. 
Hmm. If somebody brought me jeans with the leopard print strip on the side, I'd also try and destroy them. Don't even get me started on this. Thank you very much. Now that we've done it, Zara, we are starting the grand tour de pharmacy. If this stage nine was the hardest of the 2016 tour, it's not only because of the many climbs to swallow. The final ascent took place in apocalyptic conditions. Surely it will be one of the memorable moments of this grand book. Here we are, coming into the final stretch of oh, all the other races, queuing up to get their medals. Very good job. Well done. I'm proud of you. The worst name for a shop ever, as Sav says. At least it's close to the pharmacy. <laughs> Sav just dropped me off at home. I've got some editing to do tonight. So, also, I'm working on a special edit uh, in celebration of my 100th vlog, which is going to be in a few days' time. It's, uh, it's become a bit of a sporty Sunday. I didn't realize how much sports was actually on. And luckily, my internet is good enough that I can stream HSBC 7s in London. Up here, top left. Top right, I got the Liverpool Middlesbrough game. Bottom left, I got the Arsenal Everton game. And bottom right, I got the Vivo Indian Premier League T20. What you don't want to hear is the absolute mess that I'm having to deal with with the commentators. Listen to this. Sonia got home from the uh, Franschuk Literary Festival, and the sports was not going my way. Liverpool won, Arsenal. Is winning, but it doesn't matter because they still finished fifth on the in the league, which means we don't have Champions League next year. But that's fine because it means we don't have to beat Bayern Munich and get kicked out again. So Sonia and I are now heading down to Checkers to go get some stuff for dinner and to give Sonia a little bit of exercise, which is why she's in active, active wear, yeah, <laughs> doing shopping in my active wear. So Mr. Bargain Hunter himself bought a quiche Lorraine. How much did you say it would normally cost? Normally costs 55 rand, but I got it for 26, so that's what I'm having for dinner, so that I can get to my edit. Oh yeah, we, yeah, you can have some, okay. You mean you're not having yogurt and bananas for dinner? That's what I thought you... Oh well. Quiche should be done. Lorraine, come out, come out, wherever you are. Oh, Lorraine. Lorraine. Lorraine looking good. This is actually really good. Now, because today has been quite a food-orientated vlog, I'm going to teach you guys how to do grapefruit as well. So there's two different ways. One way is where you just cut it straight down the equator, like so, and then you can sprinkle sugar on it, whatever, eat it with a spoon, and it sprays in your eye. It's amazing. The way that I'm going to do it is you peel it like an orange, and then, oh, it smells so good. Okay, so once you peel this like an orange, you actually want to get rid of all of this pith, or whatever it's called. You want to get rid of all of this stuff because it's not that nice to eat with the grapefruit and yes it is quite a lass um, for those of you that don't know what lass means lass is the Afrikaans word for laborious process bullshit but it's definitely worth it in the end if you have the time obviously if you don't have the time then just cut this bad boy in half and eat him with a spoon so this is what you're starting with yeah and this is what you want to get to so that's your final product a full-on bowl of delicious grapefruit hearts here's the shells and then you wash some, what is this, double cream yogurt. Bang, bang, ready to go. Alright guys, so I'm, I'm working on my 100th video special episode type thing. I'm gonna call it a night. I hope you guys enjoyed all the food stuff in today's episode. It's kind of going back to uh, Slice of Matt's origins. Yeah, if you decide to do any of the stuff that I've shown you guys today, obviously the, the breakfast eggy bakey roll, it's nothing special. I was, I was kind of started out as a joke and then I got very serious about it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you do it, then send me like whatever pictures and things and yeah, 